Hey, you folks. In the background here is a little player unknown's battlegrounds that I'll randomly switch back and forth to while I discuss my Twitch streaming setup here at home. Now, I hesitated making this video because it's somewhat specialized, and it involves knowing how to run a server that has Unix-based operating system on it. Please note that I will not be explaining how to run such a server in this video. The assumption that I'm making is that you already know how to run Linux or FreeBSD, and that you're interested in using that to stream. Now, if you want to learn how to run Linux or FreeBSD, there are a lot of guides out there taught by people a whole lot more qualified than I am. Also, as a heads up, some of the hardware I'll show and talk about in this video is a bit expensive, perhaps needlessly so in today's age. There are absolutely less expensive ways to accomplish what I've done here with today's processors and hardware, but more on that in a bit. So how do I stream to Twitch? I do it a bit differently than the others. A lot of pro streamers build a second Windows-based PC that has a very powerful CPU in it, as well as some sort of video capture device. The latter could be an internal PCI card or an external USB device. They feed an output from their gaming PC's graphics card over to the capture device in the streaming PC. The streaming PC takes that video, compresses the bitrate down significantly, muxes it together with the audio input from the gaming PC, and then sends all of that to Twitch. The results? A fantastic looking 1080p 60fps Twitch stream that puts almost zero load on the gaming PC. The streaming PC is doing all the heavy lifting there. But there's another way to do that that results in identical quality. And depending on the size of your house or where you have your network cabling run, won't involve having two heat producing PCs in your room. And that's to build a server running Linux or FreeBSD. My choice is FreeBSD, but the OS choice doesn't matter. What matters is the software you add to it and how it's configured. Now we'll switch over here to my basement and you can see the server that I have running. I apologize for the quality here, but my basement really isn't set up and well lit for video. But as you can see, the server is built off of a Supermicro dual socket motherboard, and it has two Xeon E5-2640 V3 processors in it. These are 2011 V3 processors. They have eight cores and run at 2.6 GHz with a turbo of 3.4 GHz. I put this system together at the end of 2015, about a year after those CPUs were launched. In other words, at the time they weren't too old, but by today they're almost three years old and definitely obsolete by today's standards. The server has enough local storage for the OS and apps and 128 gigabytes of RAM. It's used primarily to handle my email, DNS, my web servers, and whatnot. But because the Xeons spend most of their time idle, I decided to put them to work compressing video. Key to making this all work are two pieces of software. The first is a web server known as NGINX or NGINX to be able to handle RTMP streams, which is what Twitch uses, an add-on module is necessary. The GitHub links for both Nginx and its add-on module are included in the description below. Once built with that module, Nginx will be able to accept and transmit RTMP streams. Once installed, you want to edit the Nginx configuration file, wherever your installer put it. As shown here, a few of these lines are default but a new section needs to be added called RTMP, and in that, a server subsection. We define the port to listen on. Default is 1935. Add a max message of 10M to help prevent stuttering and skipping. Then create two applications. The first I'm calling stream in. This is the destination my gaming PC will stream to. Nginx will listen on that application for incoming streams and perform actions based on the config file. We turn the live switch on and the record switch off. I don't need my server recording video as I'm already doing that on my gaming PC. Now the second important piece of software on the server is called FFmpeg. More folks in the media and streaming industry use FFmpeg than they actually realize it. It was first released in the year 2000 for Unix-based operating systems and later ported over to Windows. Have you ever used Handbrake? Well, the base of that is FFmpeg. How about that popular streaming and recording app that everyone else uses called OBS Studio? Do you use that? OBS exists and works because of FFmpeg. 
It lives in a lot of applications that handle photos, video, and audio. Most just don't realize it. Well, we'll use FFmpeg on our Nginx installation to compress the video stream before handing it back to, F to Nginx to then send to Twitch. It'll make a little sense in a minute. This long list of arguments here is summarized in my blog entry, which I'll link down below. I'm not going to go through it all. But the key points are, take input with the dash i switch from that previously defined stream in application, then do work on it. FFmpeg doesn't allow constant bitrate, but will set VB, minrate, and max rate to the same number, which will accomplish the same thing. And then the preset, which I have set to slow. It's about all my processors can handle before they cry uncle. That preset, by the way, is identical to the OBS Studio X264 presets. In fact, OBS took those directly from FFmpeg. So if you're familiar with those OBS presets, that knowledge transfers directly. When FFmpeg is done with its work, it outputs to another Nginx application, which I've defined Twitch. The final bit of Nginx is that Twitch application. It's simply pushing what it just received from FFmpeg straight to Twitch over the internet. And no, I'm not going to use my real Twitch key here. Nice try. OK, enough on the server. I have Nginx running in the background here, but no sign of FFmpeg. That only starts running when Nginx receives a stream from my gaming PC. So let's go look at that. Here's screen capture from OBS. You can see that because it has the display of the display of the display at an infinitum. And you can also see that it takes up nearly no CPU load while I'm actually recording this. It's using NVENC. Most importantly, though, we're going to look at two parts of the configuration, the stream tab and the output tab. The stream tab has a custom server set up, and it's the IP address of my server with the destination application of stream in. Remember that? Also, the password is here, but it's encrypted. In the output tab, we're going to focus on the streaming sub tab. Here you see I'm using that NVENC H264 hardware encoder on my NVIDIA GPU. I'm scaling the output down to 1080p. I normally game at 1440p and could just send that to the server if I wanted to. But there's no need to ask the server to scale the video down to 1080p and then compress it. The gaming rig can do that without any extra load. Because I'm using the NVENC encoder, I want to set my bitrate very high. Otherwise, the GPU will be forced to remove detail from the stream, resulting in a poor quality. So I have that set to 50 megabits per second. The rest of these settings are default except for the two-pass encoding. I have that unchecked. There's really no point in that in these higher bit rates. And that's it on the OBS side. While I'm gaming, I tell OBS to start sending a 50 megabit per second hardware stream from my gaming rig to my server. My internal network here is all gigabit ethernet, so a 50 megabit per second stream is 5% of that capacity. In other words, no big deal. Once the server gets done chewing on the stream, compressing it down to a 6.5 megabit per second stream, it sends that result directly to Twitch's ingest server via my ISP. The results? I have a 1080p 60fps stream running at 6.5 megabits per second and looking fantastic. And it also creates no overhead on my gaming rig. Like the aforementioned streaming PC, my server is doing all the heavy lifting. I can hear it now. Well, shit, that was an expensive solution. Those two Xeons cost you an arm, a leg, and your left nut when you bought them. I'm not doing that. You're right. Right now, it makes basically no sense at all to use the same kind of hardware I did. None. There are way faster and higher core count Core i7 and now Core i9 Intel CPUs out there that don't require server motherboards and whatnot. They're also way more powerful and faster than my Xeons and cost a bunch less money. Also, this will probably be the only time I ever say something nice about AMD. That new Threadripper CPU is a potential. There's no way that CPU will make a good desktop or gaming CPU. The core count is phenomenally high and basically wasted on the desktop. But as an inexpensive server CPU, oh hell yeah. 
16 physical and 32 virtual cores with a fairly nice uh, clock speed to boot. It could basically easily chew on any incoming stream without breaking too much of a sweat. And it'll cost a bunch less than Intel's as well. What if you don't want another server and you have big upstream bandwidth at your house or business? Well, if you're made of money and you understand how to operate cloud servers on Amazon, you could potentially build a streaming server on Amazon's cloud. You'd have to pay for the processing costs as well as the bandwidth you use, which won't be inexpensive at all. But the handy thing is, Amazon owns Twitch. Good odds that your new Amazon instance and your local Twitch ingest servers are really close together. Now, I haven't tried to do this myself due to the costs involved. An Amazon buddy of mine wants to actually try this out since I do have a 300 megabit per second upstream, but we just haven't had the chance to make it all happen yet. Damn, that took a lot longer than I thought it would. But that's how I do it. My server is in my basement and my office is on the second story of my house. I never see, hear, smell, or feel that server that I'm sending to. But it does a hell of a lot of the work when I'm streaming. Thanks for hanging around while I explain this to you. If you have any questions that don't involve learning how to install or run an operating system, leave them in the comment section below. I read them all and will answer them to the best of my abilities.